Well, hello everyone. This is Joe Tortonesi coming to you. Welcome to Joe's Drum Shop, where we learn all about drums. And today we're going to be talking about drum fills and what those are and how they're used in music today. Um, so what we're going to be doing on page uh, 28 of our book, and we're going to be using uh, lesson nine. And this is remember the book Fast Track by uh, Hal Leonard, and it's called Drums One. So if you haven't got the book, definitely it's uh, real cheap and inexpensive. Check it out. It's online so you can get it. Um, so first of all, what we're going to talk about are fills. What are fills? Well, fills are basically like if a drummer's playing a beat. Let's say he's playing this beat. Instead of keep playing that beat over and over, sometimes drummers like to make it a little more interesting. And one of the ways they do that is by adding toms or fills with the cymbals or with both. Could be either both. In this case, right, right now, what we're going to do is use all the toms and the snare drum and the bass drum, depending on what kind of fill we're going to do. So there's an unlimited amount of fills that you can do. Some you'd want to use for certain beats, other ones you want to use for other types of beats. In this case here, since we're doing the rock kind of thing, we're going to start off very slowly and kind of work through each one of these fills and then we'll kind of put it all together. So you can hear what it sounds like slow and then I'll speed it up. So let's take a look at number, uh, it's actually, unless, let's see, it's called Lesson 9, number 55, sticking to it, number 2. Now, on the lines for the music, the very first space, so when we're talking about music, again, on the lines and spaces, you have five lines and four spaces. On the very top space, that's going to be the first tom, okay? Then down from that on the next line, actually the circled note is going to be in the line. That's going to be tom two, just so you know. And then the last tom we're going to be using is on the third space, and that will be actually over here on the floor tom. So again, you have the first space, then the line, and then farther down from there is the floor time. It's on the third space. And of course, our bass drum is on the bottom space, and our snare drum is on the second space. So that basically takes care of all the drums. So the very first thing we're going to do is play number one, and it starts off with quarter notes. So we're going to do that right now. Every time I hit each drum, the bass drum is going to hit along with it. So let's try that out. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. And one. So I'm going to play that basically twice. And each one of these, like I said, it's going to sound a little different. So the next one we're going to do is eighth notes. And here's how that sounds. Again, the bass drum is going to be playing along with it, so watch how this is played. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay. Next. Uh, we're going to be dealing with 16th notes. Now remember just last week we were talking about 16th and how you can play many different variations of rhythms with the 16th notes to make different interesting rhythms and sounds, okay? So the first one we're going to talk about here is the 16th notes is four on each drum. So I'm going to start with the bass drum on the first of each one of these and as we move around each drum is going to get four hits. So here we go. One, two, Ready, go, and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. All right. Now the next one we're going to talk about uh, basically mixing these up. Now, as we've talked about these, like I said, we did quarter notes, we did eighths and sixteenths. Now we're going to break it up between eighth notes and sixteenth notes again to make it a little more interesting. Okay. So here we go. This is the next one. So one. Two, ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and a four, and one, and two, and three, and a four, and. All right, here we go. The next one is going to be uh, basically 16th notes and eighth notes, again, with a quarter note at the very end. And again, the bass drum will be on all four. So here's how this is going to sound. So one, two, Ready, go, and one, and a two, e, and three, and four. One, and a two, e, and three, and four. All right, next one. Now we're going to do some sixteenths again, 
And we're going to break it up so that we have two sixteenth notes on each drum. And then we'll end with some eighth notes and a quarter note at the very end as well. Again, still while playing the bass drum on all four. So here's how this is going to go. One, two, ready, go. And one E and a two E and a three and four. One E and a two E and a three and four. Simple like that. Okay. Now we're going to move on to actually putting these fills and rhythms together. Okay. So the first one, we're going to start off using the ride cymbal. Uh, bass drum is going to be on one, the and of two, three, and the and of four. And then the snare drum is obviously going to be on two and four. And the ride cymbal will play straight eighth notes. And then we're going to use the first tom, because it's on the first space, and the last tom, which is on the third space. Okay? So here we go. One, two, ready, go. And one, and two. Let's try that once more just so you can see how it's done. I'll start it off again. Two, ready, go. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, e and a four, e and a crash. All right. Are you with me so far? Okay, I know it's a little more involved. Again, you know, we played beats before and we were just working on single notes, but now, like I said, we're getting a little bit more involved. It's getting a little more tricky. And of course, coordination is everything on this. So you have to learn little, you know, slow it down. I might be playing these a little fast right now, but again, this is to help you kind of hear what it sounds like when you get it going. Because if it's too slow, it just doesn't sound anything. You know, it doesn't sound like anything in particular. All right, so the next one we're going to do, uh, we're on 57 now. This is called a fill for all seasons. And again, we're putting beats together with the fill at the end. Okay, and again, we're using the ride cymbal. Uh, we're going to be using the snare drum, the bass drum, and we're also going to be adding the next element, the fourth element, which is the hi-hat. Now, the hi-hat will hit on two and four with the snare drum, and the bass drum is going to be playing on one, the end of two and three. And the ride cymbal plays straight eighth notes. And uh, the fill at the end is going to be with 16th notes. So let's hear what this sounds like. It's going to start off with the crash. Soon, right as I count it off, it's going to crash right away. So listen to this. And again, watch my hi-hat hitting on two and four with the snare drum. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So there you go. Uh, like I said, that one's pretty basic. These next ones are going to be a little more involved, so be patient with me. And like I said, take these nice and slow again, but watch as I do them and you'll be fine. So let's try this out. So the next one is going to be using hi-hat on quarter notes. Now we used eighth notes before. Now we're going to be using quarter notes on the hi-hat, snare drum on two and four, and the bass drum plays on one and the and of three. So. This is going to be a little more funky sounding, so here we go. One, two, ready, go, and one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Again, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and the crash. All right, next one. Now we're going to start using 16th notes. And again, we're going to be playing 16 notes this time with one hand, not with two, because remember what I said before is if we use the hi-hat and the snare drum hits with the hi-hat, that's one-handed. But if we play right, left, we're only going to be using the, the snare drum and the hi-hat will not hit with the snare drum. It'll be totally different. So here we go. Uh, line three, this is again still a fill for all seasons. They have different exercises on this one exercise. So we're going to start off nice and easy. Here's the 16th notes. One, two, ready, go, and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a two E and a three E and a four one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and crash. 
A little more involved, as you can see there, really involved. Again, I usually have students do just the fill and work on the fill. So let's kind of look at that for right now and kind of break it down real slow. Um, but you're going to start off with two high toms, then two more on the medium tom. The snare drum is going to hit on three, and then three more high toms, and then two more middle tom, and then three four toms, and then crash. Okay? So that, you got to practice it individually just like that. And then when you feel you're comfortable, then put it in with the rhythm. Okay? All right, the next one. Now we're going to be going a little more involved again, adding the hi-hat back in with the foot. This time the foot will be on all four. So we got the ride cymbal, the snare drum, the bass drum, and the hi-hat. So let's take this real slow. And believe it or not, the fill in this case, instead of doing 16th notes like we've been doing the last few, we're actually going to be doing eighth notes. So it's going to go a little slower for the fill. But it's still as in involved, but it doesn't get, it's a little easier. So, okay, so let's try that out. So one two, ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. All right, so that is basically how we're doing fills. Now we're going to get a little more involved with some different types of fills. Again, we're not going to be playing them with the patterns, but we are going to be playing just different 16th notes and 8th notes and quarter notes with these. Okay, Some are more involved, some have sticking patterns, some don't have sticking patterns. Okay, So the very first one, this is a fun one, I like this one a lot. Um, it's going to be basically snare drum playing 16th notes and then the tom and then the middle tom, and then the floor tom. So here's how this is going to sound. I'll play it slow. There's no bass drum, by the way, on this one. So it's one, two, ready, go. And one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Again, I'll do that again, a little slower. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay. That is the first one, number one. Number two, it's a little more trickier, and it's going to be on snare drum, and the first tom, second tom, and the floor tom. Okay, so here's how this one's gonna sound. One, two, ready, go. One, and a two, E, and three, and a four. Again, a little slower. One, and a two, E, and three, and a four. Again, no bass drum on that one. All right, number three, uh, we're going to do this one. This has crashes, toms, bass drum. Uh, there is no snare on this, so we won't be using the snare on this particular one. All right, so number three this is. I'll start off, this actually has some rights and left patterns, so you're going to see the different rights and lefts above each note. So here's how these start off. One, two, ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and four. Again, a little slower. One and two and three and four and. All right, that's number three. All right, next one, number four, uh, is mostly the the fill's going to be using just the snare drum, and then at the very end it's going to switch to the first time. So let's hear what this sounds like. And again, this is all sixteenth notes. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. And a one E and a two E and a three E and four E and. Again, one more time, a little slower. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay? So that's that one. Now, number five, uh, we're going to do this one. This is, I kind of call this kind of like a jungle beat, okay? And the jungle beat is basically we're adding like a floor tom to it, so it's playing straight eighth notes. And at the same time, we're going to add the other toms. And there's no bass drum on this or snare drum. So let's try this out and hear what it sounds like. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three and four and. Again, one and two and three and four and. A little faster. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. 
you can see how that sounds kind of jungle-ish, you know. Um, now, the next one. This is number uh, six. We're going to be using the toms and uh, the bass drum. There's no snare drum on this one. And we're going to be using quarter notes and eighth notes. No sixteenths, by the way, on this. So here we go. Number six. One, two, ready, go. And one, and two, and three, and four, and again. One, and two, and three, and four, and. All right. Number seven. We're going to be doing seven, and this is going to be strictly 16th notes. This is another fun one that I like to play. Uh, basically, it's two on every drum. So what I'm going to be doing is playing two 16ths on the snare, then two 16ths on the bass drum. Then I'm going to come back up, play two on the high tom, and then guess what? Two on the bass drum, and so on and so on. So two on the middle tom, two on the bass, two on the floor tom, two on the bass. And sometimes if we have double bass or double pedal, you can actually play both pedals and instead of playing two bass drums on one drum, you can play them on both drums and then you can even get a faster type of fill. Um, really fast, by the way. A lot of the metal guys use that kind of a fill. But let's start this off again just with one foot and here's what this sounds like. So one, two, three, four. And one E and a two E and a three E. Do it again real slow. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay? All right, next is, again, more 16th notes, but we're going to do it a different way. Um, these will actually have uh, the toms, all the toms, and the bass drum, and then at the very end, they'll throw in the snare drum. So here's what this is going to sound like. Uh, this is, by the way, number eight. Okay? One, two, ready, go. And one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay, let's do that again. One, two, ready, go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay? All right. That was number eight. Next one. Now we're going to be using still 16th notes. Uh, we will add the snare drum and the rest of the toms, and there is no bass drum on this particular one, okay? So let's start this one off. And this is one that kind of reminds me of like number one, but it's not all the way through exactly like it, but it sounds, or it actually plays a little bit similar to it, so. Number nine, two, ready, go. And one E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. Again, we'll do that one more time. One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. All right, number 10. This is number 10, and we're going to be playing 16ths and some eighth notes, pretty much using everything at will. So here we go. Number 10. One, two, ready, go. One E and a two and three E and four. One, two, ready, again. One E and a two and three E and four. All right, next one. Now we're going to be doing straight sixteenths again. This time we're going to be utilizing all the drums except the bass drum. Okay, so here's how this one starts. One, two, ready, go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. I'll do that again. One, two, ready, go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay, a little tricky, but again, slow it down and make it easier for yourself until you get comfortable with it. Then you can speed it up. All right, next and last but not least is number 12. Uh, this one is going to be floor tom, snare drum, high tom, mid time, and then back to the snare drum again with the last floor tom as well. So, again, no bass drum on this. So here we go, last one, number 12. One, two, ready, go. And one and a two, a three E and four. One more time. One, two, ready, go. One and a two, a three E and four. One more time. One, two, ready, go. And one and a two, a three E and four.
All right, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, this is going to be on page 31. Uh, these are called the Power Tom fills. So basically, uh, we're going to be utilizing the beats again, and we're going to play some very simplistic fills with more of the eighth notes and quarter notes, again, to show you what they sound like. And also, some of the fills will actually be playing through the pattern itself, so you'll get to hear that as well. Let's check this out. Number 59, called Power Tom's number one. One. Two, ready, go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and crash. All right, as you can see, that one took a little bit of uh, creativity because I had to move my stick. I had to reach for the tom, but I was still playing the hi-hat. So I had to reach under my right hand to hit that tom. I couldn't go over. You don't want to play over because then your stick can kind of get hung up here with your arm and you could actually hit it or it can get in your way and mess up your timing and all of that. So you always want your left stick to go underneath so that way nothing is interfering with each other, okay? All right, number 60, this is Power Tom's number two. Again, we're still on the hi-hat, and again, still, still doing some eighth notes and quarter notes as the fills. Let's check this one out. So one, two, ready, go. And one, and two, and three, and four, 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 crash. All right, as you can see, I had to really stretch from the hi-hat to the floor tom, but again, that sometimes you have to do that. If it's, if it's using the hi-hat and you can't switch it around, you don't want to use your left hand for the hi-hat. Although some guys might, they might use the left hand a lot. So if it's up to them, you know, of course, as long as it doesn't mess with your rhythm. Again, if it messes with your rhythm, it's best to kind of do it this way. So I always go, again, right over to the left and see the left comes underneath and hits the floor time right there, okay? All right, um, so next one, we're gonna talk about number three. This is called Power Times number three. It's number 61, we're going to the ride cymbal and we're gonna be playing again, still some more eighth notes on the toms. So here we go with that. And this one's a little more busy too, so watch the bass drum. Two, ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four crash all right cool number uh this is actually power times number four we're looking at number 62 okay here we go uh this is playing quarter notes on the hi-hat and again moving around the drums we're going to be playing some toms and uh, let's see, is there any snares? No, it looks like the snares are not in this particular one. So we're just doing the toms with the cymbal, hi-hat, and the bass drum. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. And one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and crack. All right, actually there was one snare drum. I looked at it and I just noticed that as I uh, was playing it. There is one snare drum, right in the middle, by the way. All right, the next one, riding the toms. This one's a fun one. This kind of reminds me of something Van Halen would do, probably from their, I think their first album, they kind of did stuff like this. First or second album. Um, this is number 63 called Riding the Toms. And again, this is using the bass drum, the floor tom, and the high tom, and the snare. So. This is gonna play three times this beat, and then the fill will be at the end. Okay, let's hear what this sounds like. One, two, ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. Again, one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. I'll play a little bit faster this time, okay? So one, two, Ready, go. One and two and three and four. 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 OK, 
Okay. Very good. All right. We're on page 31. We're just finishing that up. We're going to be going on to lesson 10. Now, this is going to be not talking about uh, the fills so much uh, as about the hi-hat. This is what this whole section is developed for. Now, the hi-hat's a very interesting symbol. And first of all, if you notice on the hi-hat, there are two symbols. And basically what's happening, I'm going to show you basically the anatomy of a hi-hat. This right here, the symbol, is attached to the center pole by this wing nut. Okay, and this wing nut holds this, by, as you can see, it drops by itself, unless I hold this up just a little bit and then tighten this wing nut and then it stays on the pole, okay, as you can see. So now, as that's on there, I can push down on the pedal, as you can see. If this is not attached to it and I push down on the pedal, the pole goes up and down, but the hi-hat does not, okay, as you can see. So it's very important to make sure that you want your hi-hat attached to the center pole, otherwise it's not going to open or close. So it's really important. Okay. The other thing is, is that sometimes if you close it down too tight and you push your foot down, the hi-hat can come up way too high. This is way too much uh, space between the top and the bottom. Because, I mean, of course it will work, but you're pushing your foot down so far that it's not going to give you the right feel of timing and everything. Again, I usually put my hi-hats to about... If I put my fingers in just slightly, or you can put your stick in there, and I usually just kind of like about that high, and then I will tighten it up, and that's usually about as much as I need, because then I can get a nice hi-hat chick sound. Again, I call that the chick sound. Okay? So it gets a nice hi-hat sound. Now, what we're going to be doing in this, as far as the notation, basically the notation is straight eighth notes, and then whenever you see a little circle, that circle will represent the hi-hat being open. Now, in some books, I don't know, not so much in this book, but in other books, sometimes they'll have a plus after the hi-hat's open, and that'll stand for close the hi-hat. In this book, they just use the circle open, and that just means to open the hi-hat at that very particular one, and then the next note, no matter what, just close the note, okay? They just kind of already assume that you would know that. All right, now, as far as the hi-hat's concerned, remember we talked about in the very first page of this book, we actually talked about the hi-hat being on top of the line. It was not in the line because that's the ride symbol. So we we're talking about just the hi-hat itself on top of the line, but whenever you see that little circle above it, open the hi-hat up. All right, so we're going to start practicing just the hi-hat without any snare drum or bass drum interfering so that you can kind of see how I'm using this. So here we go. I'll start off with one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, as you can see right there, as soon as I said and, I made sure I hit it right when I said that. You don't want to be saying and before or after that. You want to make sure you open it exactly at the same time you say that. So like one and two and three and four and. Otherwise, it just sounds off, the timing. All right, the next one we're going to talk about. So that was actually um, exercise 64. This one's actually 65. It's called open and close one. We'll add some snare and bass drum to this. So let's try this out now. One, two, three. Ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. And one, and two, and three, four. Okay. So as you can see, every time we count those ands, every time I say and, and the circle's there, open that hi-hat up and then close it on the next hi-hat. So that's another thing I want to mention too, is that when you open the hi-hat, make sure that when you're coming down and hitting the hi-hat again, that you hit it right when you close it, because if you don't, you'll get like a flam sound. Remember, a flam is like two separate sounds, but they don't, you know, they sound real close together, but they're slightly off. So you would get this kind of thing. Like, it would start off like one and two and, you hear that? That's a flam. That, you don't want that sound. You want to make sure it's one and two and three. Notice I came in exactly 
as I'm closing it, I'm hitting it at the same time because you don't want that extra noise. All right, uh, the next one. So it's going to be number 66, open and close number two. Again, this is going to be quarter notes, and we'll take this nice and slow as well. Let's hear what this one sounds like. One, two, ready, go. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, and three, four. All right. Next one, uh, Disco Days, number 67. Um, basically, this one, again, the music that we used to play back in the early 70s, mid-70s, uh, it started with this music called disco, and drummers started to use the hi-hat opening a lot in that style of music. Now, rock drummers are even using it, and again, metal guys are using it. It's a very, very important sound, again, to create certain type of music that needs some more busy or hi-hat sound. And sometimes just... 16th notes are just not enough. Sometimes you just need that hi-hat to open up and close. So I'm going to play some of these. These are very busy. Um, not 16th busy, but they're 8th note busy, but they're still busy like opening that up. So I would suggest, again, always, as I always say, practice these slowly. When they get comfortable, then speed them up. All right, here we go. So Disco Days, this is number 67. One and two and ready, go. One and two. And three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three four. All right, as you can see, it was very busy. I'm gonna play that again. We'll do it one more time. I'm gonna play it a little faster so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three. All right, as you can see, very interesting type of pattern because of the way the hi-hat's moving up and down. All right, the next thing, and this is going to be kind of the last thing we're going to talk about today on the show. Um, next week, we've got some really fun stuff coming up. We've got some drum solos. I'll be talking about those next week, So, or the next time I have a show. I always say next week, but that's just because I'm a teacher. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically the rim shot, as you can see, there's a quarter note at the top and it has a circle around it. So whenever you see that snare drum and it's got a circle, that means a rim shot. So let's explain, let me explain what a, a rim shot is. A rim shot actually is when you hit the side of the stick on the rim of the drum. I'm going to hold my hand. I don't grab my hand around it where my fingers are touching the head. They're actually touching the head with like the fingertips, more or less. And I'm kind of pinching my first finger and my thumb on it and I kind of let the butt end or the end of the stick just ra keep, keep close to the head. It doesn't even come off the head. It stays there. It's kind of like a hinge. And I'm basically just lifting up and then hitting the rim of the drum. You can see this metal part right here. This is the rim and of course this is the drum head. So I'm hitting on the rim and here's what it sounds like. It's got a nice wood sound to it. Now, sometimes if you're not in the right place, I happen to, to know where the sweet spot is. They call it the, the sweet spot. Is If you're too far forward, you get kind of different sounds. So it, it kind of sounds a little, little either hollow or too full, too thick, or sometimes a little thin. So like too far back, is, it's real thin. You want, kind of a, you want that kind of a sound, see? So that's the sound I'm going to be playing on this. And let's give it, this is called uh, number 68, ballad style number one. So let's hear what this sounds like. And they use this a lot with the kind of ballad -y kind of music, you know, the softer kind of music, uh, maybe like a love song, something like that, okay? Think of like the, the 70s kind of uh, love song kind of so stuff. Um, all right, so here's, this is what this sounds like. One, two, ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three four all right that was number one number two we're going to play 16th notes and again this still could be used for ballads 
uh, you know, again, like a love song type of thing. And you can play it real kind of soft. So here's what this sounds like. One, and we're going to be playing the hi-hat, by the way, uh, 16th notes. And we're going to be playing one-handed, not two. So, because obviously we got to play that rim shot on, on two and four. So here we go. One, two, three. Ready, go, and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and again one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a crash. All right. Very interesting. Again, you can, you know, we could have played it one E and a two. Again, that snare drum just sounds too loud. If you're playing a love song or something quieter, you don't need that crack in the middle of a song. It just, it's too powerful. You need something a little bit lighter, and that's what that nice little wood sound that rim shot is all about. Just like that. All right, let's talk about number 70. This is called Cross My Stick. This is getting into the Latin kind of style of, of using it. So uh, I would say back in the day, um, you know, they had uh, percussionists play. Um, some would play claves, would have that kind of a sound. A clave is like a stick, a little bit thicker than this, and they're not as long. And they would play these little clicks in between. And you have like a conga player playing his drums, a bongo player playing his drums, and you have the guy playing the shaker. And so this is kind of to simulate that whole thing in the whole drum set itself. Instead of having four or five guys, one guy can do all of that. So here's what that's going to sound like. This is number 70. It's called Cross My Stick number one. Listen to the Latin. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four again. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four again. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and crash. All right. Let's play that again a little bit faster. Here's what it sounds like. One and two and three and four and 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 So I stopped counting so you can kind of hear what it sounds like, the whole rim thing. All right, and then the last one again, this is going to be kind of like a, I would say more like a Motown kind of a beat to it that has some rim shots in it, and you probably will hear a lot of, you know, once you hear this beat, you're going to hear a lot of uh, Motown songs in your head. So here's what this sounds like. So again, the, uh, the rim shot's going to be playing on all four, and the bass will be playing sometimes with the click, sometimes between the click. So let's hear what this sounds like. This is number 71, Cross My Stick, number two, and this will be the last one. So let's take a listen to it. Here we go. One, two. Ready, go, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, and crash. All right, let's try one more time. I'm going to play a little bit faster. Here we go. One, two, ready, go, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, I really appreciate you guys sticking here and watching my show. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line at joedrums1 at comcast.net. I would appreciate it. Let me know uh, if you have any questions or if you just wanted to say, hey, I loved your show, just uh, let me know. Send me a line, and I will, I will try to answer you as best as I can and as soon as I can. All right, until then, you guys take care. Keep rocking. This is Joe signing off. We'll see you on the next Joe's Drum Shop, and we're going to have fun. So stay tuned to that, and we'll see you next time.